Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to dive further into Omega and by getting into uh, some of the media query aspects of Omega and what makes it really cool, uh, basically how you can have really nice uh, responsive layouts without doing a whole ton of extra custom CSS. A lot of it you can maintain and, and do directly through the Omega interface, which can, of course, save you quite a bit of time um, so you don't have to repeat things that you would uh, code over and over again because they have this framework built in place for you uh, that can handle a lot of the more standard things to do for you. And if you need to do some less standard things, then um, there are options for that. Uh, in fact, things that we'll have to go over in another tutorial because there, there's a lot of different, different things, uh, approaches you could take. But for this, um, you can get so much accomplished with Omega itself. So before we had turned on the uh, the grid system, we left it as a default 960 instead of being a fluid grid. And um, if we scroll down here, you can see our primary layout settings. So our primary layout is the normal layout right now. Um, it's all it could be the narrow, could be the wide, could be the fluid if you'd like. Um, if we go to our documents here, if we look at our SAS files, you'll remember that we created a global.scss. And what this global CSS file is, is basically this is uh, the narrowest view. This is the mobile view. And if you have uh, if you follow the mobile first anything, uh, if you don't, I, I'd highly recommend checking out a book of parts, uh, mobile first uh, by Luke Robluski. Uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Uh, but uh, this book is great. It'll, it'll teach you a lot about um, the great things of doing mobile layouts and responsive sites. But uh, the way that Omega has it set up is Omega is uh, mobile first. So your global style sheet is your mobile style sheet. Um, if I come in here, you can see the other style sheets that it comes with. We have narrow, normal, wide, and then default. And these are just getting more and more wide as they go up. So it's narrow, normal, wide. Let's go back here and you'll see that same pattern represented we'll have um, our primary layout is normal. So this is what it is uh, for your normal. This is like the main desktop version of your site. And the narrow layout is going to be um, also, uh, the, the narrow layout here gives you direct access to your media query. Um, and it says the minimum width is 700 pixels and the minimum device width is 740 pixels. Maximum device width is 800 pixels and uh, orientation landscape. This is all your media query stuff. So if you wanted to go ahead and change this, you wanted the breakpoints to be at different uh, pixel values, then you could go, go to town and change that all up. What this is really gonna do is just, uh, these media queries are saying at what point is it going to use the narrow layout CSS file? And since we're doing this in SAS, I would make a copy of this as an SCSS, uh, just like we did with global. And just likewise, normal layout, uh, this is the this is the layout of the responsive grid, our normal layout. Um, and then the wide layout here, uh, looks like it's using the wide lay layout for uh, pixel widths that are larger than 1220. And like we said, you could change that if you want. If you wanted it to be uh, even less than that before it switches over your wide, or basically you could have these be whatever you want. It's almost like you're writing the media queries yourself, but you don't have to because the breakpoints are already set up here for you. But if you needed to maybe turn off one of these layouts, you didn't want the narrow layout at all, uncheck it. You don't have it anymore. Um, so this is really great because it allows you complete control over your media queries without having to go in there and write them yourself. So to demonstrate something real quick, uh, I'm not even going to bother doing a SAS file, but narrow. Um, since I have some of these layouts enabled, I'm just going to show some of these media queries in action. Um, Uh, what it so since we have these enabled I'm just going to show some of these media queries in action I'm going to do body and I'm going to add this background red and then copy this normal and if you remember we had gray being as our um, our global, which is going to be 
like I said, our mobile, the smallest style sheet. Um, and okay. So we're gonna have all sorts of different stuff going on here. Those are all saved. I'm gonna refresh. Cool, we have yellow. Sort of what we'd expect to see at our next break point. I think it's gonna be blue, okay. Then we should see red and then gray. Brilliant, okay. This is just really to illustrate uh, the fact that you can just get in here to these CSS files, you can change the values, and uh, you can do all the business you need to do to have your site looking great on a mobile platform, looking great on a desktop platform, um, and follow the mobile first uh, philosophy. Start at your global style sheet and then work out to narrow, normal, wide, or however many of them you need. So that's how you control the media queries with your Drupal Omega site. Uh, I hope this was really informative. In fact, uh, in the next couple of lessons, we'll get into some more content and we'll put, we'll put some more things in and show you exactly how uh, these sites are collapsing and expanding. Um, and you know, the media queries is built into Omega is just one of the aspects that makes this framework really great to work with. As always, if you have any questions, leave a comment on the video. Hit us up at Level Up Tuts. Let us know what you're thinking. Um, you can hit me up at, at uh, on Twitter at Level Up Tuts or at S Tolinsky. Um, as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and thanks for watching.